obviously th th this was th these issues uh, that you're you're trying to get shed some light on are of huge significance and were at the time and the correspondence that was going on um, had international repercussions i find it that the idea that the head of the cps knew nothing about what was going on just simply incredible i just wondered in addition to the other question I asked you, whether, whether you've seen anything to indicate that Keir Starmer was involved in making this decision. So, <clears throat> thank you for this question. So, in the book I have reconstructed 13 years of investigative work in this case. So it has been put in together in a way that is narrative and anyone can read because otherwise, if, if you cannot read the book, you don't read it. You read the book because it is a pleasure to read it. And uh, the book is based not just on 13 years of investigative work, but on eight years, it has become eight years, <laughs> of fighting in UK court tribunals, US courts, uh, Australian court, the tribunal, Swedish court, to get the full documentation on Julian Assange. Why I'm so obsessed? Why a journalist dedicate so much time and it's so expensive? Initially, I paid myself. When I reached 6,000 euros, I could not afford any more. And I said I had to find to, a way to pay the legal fees. In the US, the legal fees have reached 100,000 of dollars in two years. Fortunately, the US lawyers are working completely pro bono, otherwise I would have been unable. Why this work? This work because in 2015, after Julian has spent five years basically confined, initially under house arrest, then in the embassy without not even a, an hour outdoors, and I was, I was basically witnessing how his health started collapsing, collapsing, and I, every time I visited him, this is, was a very visible process, his health collapsing. In 2015, I realized that no journalist had tried to get the, the, the document about this case. How can you win a case if you don't know the facts? You cannot. And an Italian prosecutor, our Italian prosecutor can be very good, very good, and it is not, uh, it is not uh, coincidence that basically we are the only country in the world which nailed the CIA agents which kidnapped a person in Milan. We were the only to uh, identify them and to get a final sentence, to charge them and to get a final sentence because of our prosecutors and their independence. So an Italian prosecutor told me, why this case is paralyzed? This is, there is nothing normal about this case. And I said, because the Swedish prosecutors don't want to go to London to question Julian Assange and to decide whether to charge him for rape if they have enough evidence or to drop the charges and he said this is not normal it shouldn't be like this the prosecutor should go there to question him immediately and to decide whether to drop or charge him drop the case or in charge him and uh, he said that this is not normal we italian prosecutor traveled to brazil to question very dangerous mafia people and they cannot fly from stockholm to london to question him you must discover why they don't want to go there. Of course, I'm an Italian journalist. I have no sources inside the Swedish prosecution. So the only option I had was to use the freedom of information. I filed this freedom of information request in Sweden in August 2015, and what I obtained <laughs> was incredible. Basically, the Swedish authorities provided evidence that it was the Crown Prosecution Service at that time headed by Sir Keith Starmer who told the Swedish prosecutor, don't come here to question him. And by doing so, they basically advised the Swedish prosecutor against the only legal strategy which could have brought to a quick solution of the case, questioning Julian in London and decided how to go ahead. 
So I got this documentation and it was clear that the crucial decision on the Julian Assange case were taken between 2010-2013 when Keir Starmer was heading the Crown Prosecution Service as Director of the Prosecution. However, there is not a single email documented that, that he instructed the Crown Prosecution uh, lawyers to take this decision about Julian Assange. However, we cannot say who took this decision. We know the name of the lawyer, Mr. Porclos, but we don't know whether he received any instruction from the top of the, of the Crown Prosecution Service headed by Secretary Starman. The only way to know is to obtain the full correspondence. Problem is that the Crown Prosecution Service destroyed them. Destroyed the, the correspondence about the case, why it was still ongoing and highly controversial. And again, I ask our prosecutors, we have all sorts of judicial scandal, legal scandal in Italy, and I ask a, a very experienced prosecutors, is it normal? Do, do we have any example of this? of destruction of documents as the Crown Prosecution Service did. And the prosecutor said, no, this is not, not normal at all. We not even has had, ever had a, a scandal like this. So these documents have been destroyed. And I have discovered this in 2017, November 2017. A month after, I went to the embassy to discuss this with Julian Assange, December 2017. I discovered two years later what happened while we were talking. Someone secretly accessed all my devices, unscrewed my phone, extracted the scene. We were spied secretly. Fortunately, they took pictures, so we have evidence that this really happened. Since 2017, when I discovered this destruction of, of crucial documents, I have been fighting in, uh, the Crown Prosecution, against the Crown Prosecution Court to obtain information about who destroyed the documents, on whose instruction, how, and they refused to provide explanation. Yesterday, we had a new hearing at, uh, here in London about this documentation. And basically, I'm still fighting to get this documentation. And soon, no, new important revelation will come out, thanks to this litigation. And we re I really hope to get any information about the role of the Crown Prosecution Service, any, any <laughs> alleged involvement of Kirk Starmer, because I try to ask I tried to contact this person. I tried to heal him. I got no reply. And I'm trying to get this documentation at all costs, at all costs, because these documents are dynamite. And that's why four governments are denying me access to this documentation. If it was normal documentation, they would have released it. They are not revealing these documents because these documents contain evidence of serious, serious mishandling, serious corruption in the case. Thank you.